This video is based on the recent publication by Dr. Keith Johnson of MIT in the International Journal of Astrobiology. The Hubble Space Telescope has revealed a galaxy, NGC 1052, approximately 72 million light years from Earth, where one can literally see through to other galaxies behind it. It is an ultra diffuse galaxy, almost as wide as the Milky Way but contains only one two hundredth of the number of stars in the Milky Way. Furthermore, the galaxy contains, at most, only one four hundredth of the amount of dark matter that astronomers expect from standard dark matter theory. The ultra-diffuseness of the galaxy also suggests a lack of the cosmic dust, characteristic of the Milky Way and most other galaxies. In the following, we connect the absence of dark matter with the absence of cosmic dust by reviewing a novel theory of dark matter that originates from cosmic dust. Cosmic dust from supernovae, a problem for many astronomers, some who may even have lost a Nobel Prize because they underestimated it. Yet, cosmic dust, coated with thin layers of amorphous water ice, is a blessing in disguise. With the help of incident cosmic radiation, water nanoclusters are ejected into space from the amorphous water ice coatings of the cosmic dust. These water nanoclusters are dodecahedrally shaped and have quantum Rydberg electron states shown here to extend beyond each cluster. They are the basis for Rydberg dark matter. Over 30 years of searching for dark matter, proposed exotic elementary particles such as WIMPs and axions have not been observed experimentally, even in the latest large underground xenon lux and MIT abracadabra detectors. Nor have the WIMPs predicted from supersymmetry theory been created in the CERN Large Hadron Collider. Other types of dark matter, such as neutrinos and black holes, have been suggested, but thus far not enough of it has been found. In conclusion, stable dodecahedral water nanoclusters, ejected from amorphous ice-coated cosmic dust, constitute Rydberg matter. Rydberg matter interacts, or becomes quantum entangled, over long distances in space, causing it to be transparent to visible, infrared, and radio frequencies. Thus, it is one form of baryonic dark matter. Rydberg matter is a low-density substance, so that one doesn't need a lot of it to explain dark matter, compared with non-baryonic elementary particles, such as WIMPs, axions, and neutrinos. What about dark energy, which is believed to be responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe? Unfortunately, quantum field theory predicts a dark energy density associated with quantum fluctuations of the vacuum that is too large by 120 orders of magnitude. This is called the vacuum catastrophe. To solve this problem, we first view the vacuum electromagnetic field as a collection of quantized harmonic oscillators of normal mode frequencies, nu sub k, summing over the zero-point energies of each oscillator mode. H is Planck's constant, and C is the velocity of light in a vacuum. This leads to the energy density equation shown here. The wave vector, K, signifies the normal modes of the electromagnetic field that are consistent with the boundary conditions on the quantization volume, V. As V approaches infinity, one obtains the right-hand side of the equation. We can remove the infinity by replacing the upper limit of the integral by a cutoff frequency set by the Planck scale, but this still results in a huge vacuum energy by 120 orders of magnitude. If instead, we subtract the energy density, rho sub c, of virtual photons of zero-point vacuum fluctuations captured by ejected water nanoclusters through the microscopic dynamical Casimir effect, the divergent integral is largely cancelled. Nu sub c is the cutoff vibrational frequency of the ejected water nanoclusters. This leaves the finite quantity shown, 
to be identified with the dark energy density. For the prominent pentagonal dodecahedral water nanocluster, the cutoff vibrational frequency is approximately 1.7 terahertz. This formula produces the correct, small dark energy density and consequently, the small cosmological constant. To summarize visually, cosmic water nanoclusters can absorb vibrationally, by the microscopic dynamical Casimir effect, the unwanted high-frequency virtual photons of zero-point energy vacuum fluctuations. Only vacuum fluctuations below the water nanocluster cutoff vibrational frequency are gravitationally active. The net pressure of the system is negative, consistent with dark energy. In the present theory, we have proposed that supernovae produce ice-coated cosmic dust that ejects water nanoclusters, filling space as a quintessent scalar field of dark matter. Like the fifth element of Plato and Aristotle, the indicated anisotropic dipole moments along the nanocluster axis are precursors to water nanocluster birefringents, analogous to the terahertz induced birefringents of liquid water. Observational evidence for birefringents of the cosmic microwave background has recently been reported. As our universe continues to expand, water nanoclusters ejected from cosmic dust will grow larger, and their vibrational frequencies will decrease. Large water clusters are less interacting with the prebiotic molecules of life. With decreasing vibration frequency, dark energy density also decreases. The universe will stop expanding and contract, as the gravity of the remaining matter takes over. The universe will expand again, leading to a single cyclic universe, instead of an inflationary multiverse. According to this scenario, we are presently living at the ideal time in our universe for life, as we know it, to exist. And water nanoclusters, ejected from cosmic dust, could be the seeds of life throughout the universe.